All right, today guys, we are talking about roof mount hardware. So we bought all our Unistrut, which is this, this bar. We got them at Home Depot. You, if you buy more than 10 of them, you get them for like 30 bucks a piece. And we needed like a lot of them, like 40, 40 of them, I think. So if you buy them at Home Depot, it's all good. Just remember, if you buy them at Home Depot, you need to buy their nut that works with it, okay? I went and bought from Amazon, from Amazon, I bought these, these T-bars like this, and it comes with this little this little jewel here. Okay, so on Amazon, the picture that showed with this says that that across was one inch, or it said it was 1.14 inches across. Well, in actuality, that's under an inch. It's like 0.93 inches across. So you can see the problem here when you put that in here. <laughs> it just does not, it ain't gonna stay in there. It just, it's too small. Where these, from Home Depot, see the difference in them? How much wider that is? So, yes, buy the Home Depot lock washer, or um, lock nuts that fit in the, in the unit channel. So I thought, okay, so we'll just go ahead and we'll, we'll, we'll build it that way. So, the next problem you're going to have is you got to make sure... You can't just buy a regular old net. It has to be able to fit down inside this T-metal. But you have to be able to get a socket on it. So a regular bolt is not going to work. Because you can't get a socket around the bolt. Because of these walls on the T-metal. On this mount. Aren't wide enough. So you have to have an eye. Uh, have to have an Allen wrench or something. That you can drive from the center of the bolt. To tighten that up okay now those are the mid span or the, you know it goes between between like these right here okay that's gonna go between the panels these are end clips to where they clip on so I guess the most important thing I can tell you guys right now is is to do your homework and, and test fit stuff before you get people up on the roof to start putting panels up and help you put panels up. Another thing I found that does help a lot, because we're on a 512 pitch, just that's almost it's almost a 612 pitch. So if you put a panel here, it ain't gonna stay here. It's it's gonna just go down. If you don't tighten it down and have somebody to hold it, it's gonna go down. But what I found is I could take this this strap, hook it onto the top. Um, channel metal and then hook it on the top nail and it will actually hold it in place while I get in there and do whatever I got to do um, it, it, it's, it works okay that, that does work the other thing I will tell you guys is do not get too excited about putting these nailing all these down perfect because you're going to undo all of them what I found is because like right here this one's ready to go right ready to go I have to pull that that bolt out to get this past it so that is that is something to think about okay I have a gap here you'll see I have a gap between my unistrut it's about 32 inches or 37 inches it's 37 inches I think so I have one panel goes there another panel go on top of it but that the, the third panel as you can tell, it's going to end up being about a foot into this this void here. So I just took some Unistrut, cut it to size, and then just took an extra Unistrut and just cut chunks. So I can then piece this in like that, put a bolt up through, um, and that'll work. Now I got looking at these bolts being too long. You can either cut those off with a sawzall. Or not even worry about it because the back of the panels are hollow. That's not going to touch nothing. 
I mean, it, you know, unless it happens to be right where you're, right where the next edge of the next uh, panel is going to be, and it's not. So that's not really a big deal. So like I say, just don't worry about tightening all these down perfect because you're going to undo every one of them. Um, anything else I can talk about up here? So we have three panels up, and that's because I had people here to help me start moving them. Had a forklift here and everything. And uh, then I figured out, oh, shh stymie these uh this hardware doesn't fit so this is where i got stuck at so now then we had 10 days of rain and i wasn't about to get up here and do it by myself um i, I probably could but i just don't think it'd be wise so this weekend i'm playing a senior softball tournament so i can't do it this weekend so next week sometime i'll get this forklift back and get some help lifting the rest of these, these panels up there's 32 panels that go on this roof um they're 550 watts a piece, and uh, like I said, there's 32 of them. So we have a lot of power that's going to be uh, developed here. These are my um, my combiner boxes. I have four of them. Basically, I will take four panels and series them. So that's hot, hot lead to negative lead, hot lead to negative lead. So for my set of four here, I basically I have... On this bottom left one, I have the hot on this side. I am joined together in series there. Then I have a jumper from there to this one. So when I put the fourth one in, it will tie into that. And then that red lead will actually tie into the fourth panel, given that my series of four, right? Then I'll do exactly the same thing on the next four. That gives me two sets of four in series. Then all four of those wires will go over here and tie into combiner box number one, which will then tie both those series, those 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 eight panels that will be in series, will now be tied together to make them parallel, keeping, which will keep my um, voltage down and it will keep the wattage up. Um, so the amperage will will meet my control um, um, charge controllers because I'm actually plugging these into um, charging 500 amp uh, amp hour batteries. So basically, that's how my system looks up here. Like I said um, I probably won't be able to finish it this weekend, but the weekend after I'll probably have all this mounted and done. I don't know if I can get all 32 panels here. I might end up with being 30. I might have two extras, which I might put over on the garage. Just not sure yet. But anyway, guys, um, Home Depot channel strut. It's just works fine. It's just make sure you get hardware that actually fits. Oh, and here's my um, bonding. I will bond... So basically, all of these will be bonded together as soon as you get all of the um, all the panels on here. They're all basically this will become one. All the side will become one through the panels, and I will bond it to the earth ground with this. And that's number six gauge um, ground wire. And then I got a bug nut, basically tying these two pigtails onto it. So this pigtail will go over here. That one will go over there. But I can't put them on because I will have to run. The nuts through there and after i do all of it so i'll put that on last then those go over and they tie into the combiner boxes to ground out the fuses for the combiner boxes anyway i guess that's uh i guess that's our video for today maybe we'll go down and make another one on combiner boxes or on um charge controllers